I remember years ago when I first got exposed to Pavel Tetsuling, um, I read Power to the People, I read uh, Daily Dynamite and all these type of books. Uh, there was a few others that I read. Um, and like, you know, he was basically game changer for me. He just completely changed uh, the way I thought about training, the way I thought about intensity, the number of sessions per day, all that stuff. Uh, but I remember he specifically um, used to emphasize, uh, you know, he used to say, when in doubt, train your grip and your core. Um, and then it kind of goes on to describe the, the phenomenon called irradiation, which is like basically, uh, basically it's like the spilling over of, of uh, uh, how do I say, of stimulus across to neighboring or adjacent tissues. So when you clench your fist really, really, really hard, it is very, very hard to not engage your bicep, your tricep, your lat, and that kind of thing. Same with the core. Uh, if you develop a really strong core and you really, like, you know, clench down with your core, you, you know, it's it's almost impossible to not engage your glutes, you know. It's kind of like this coupling effect of the human body. Um, and there's, like, you know, certain centers uh, that do that for us. Um, so he used to say, when in doubt, when you hit a plateau, when you don't know how to get out of something, just go back to training core and uh, go back to training the grip. Because those two things kind of basically then you know, spill over to all the other tissues and you'll kind of get stronger that way. And then I remember on that same topic, I remember hearing Louis Simmons talk about uh, training weaknesses. Um, so, you know, very, we, you know, we all know kind of the conjugate system, how they used to have variation all the time, you know, changing um, the type of movements they did, the, the, the bars they used and all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, but he always used to say that there are weaknesses in the human body. Uh, no matter what you do, these muscles are going to be weak. And he always talked about uh, hamstring weaknesses, um, lower back weaknesses, and upper back weaknesses. And he also spoke about core as well. So those like, you know, four things. Hamstrings, lower back, upper back, um, and core, like your anterior core. Uh, so when I, when I take these two things together, I keep thinking to myself, you know, I, I, I think sometimes we overthink performance, human movement, biomechanics. We overthink this stuff. Um, and I know we, we get caught up in, I mean, certainly I do think about you know, squatting this rep range, that rep range, uh, all these different modalities of how to kind of go about squatting. Um, but maybe what's really happening here is that there are certain weaknesses that are basically the rate limiting step, um, if I can use that chemistry, um, uh, you know, saying. There's a rate limiting step. Um, and for a lot of people, for whatever reason, the way we live, the way we kind of go about existing in this world, uh, the hamstrings are one of those things that I always talk to you guys about. Um, you know, one of you guys said to me, uh, last night, you know, uh, you started squatting a lot, um, and surely uh, <laughs> over time uh, you developed worse and worse technique with the squat, and now you've got a really bad, uh, you know, pelvic posterior tilt or, or, or you know, butt wink um, because of squatting all the time. And I said to him, "Look, man, squatting um, brings about." Uh, tightness, you know, there, there's certain prime movers in the human body and for you probably as a result of squatting your adductors, hamstrings and glutes have kind of gotten tight and now you, you've lost hip flexion. So I said to him, you know, go back to stretch a little bit and whatever. Um, but there's like a recurring theme here. Um, wherever I kind of look around, there's always like a few muscles that are that are kind of limiting our performance. Um, rarely do I, do, I, do I think to myself, okay, this man needs more quads if he's squatting every day. Um, or if you're squatting a whole bunch. So the muscles that, you know, I guess Pavel Tutsulin and, and Louis Simmons always talk about, there's a, there's a carry over there, right? Um, so, you know, what am I thinking right now? Well, one of the things that I have implemented recently and I've just, I just feel in my freaking bones, this is the right thing to do, is good mornings. And I know Louis Simmons talked about good mornings a very long time and early this year, I spent some time with good mornings. I've changed my technique for this time around. I'm bending my knees a little bit more. I'm kind of going for that hip flexion a little bit more. Last time I had kind of straight legs and I was kind of feeling that sharp sensation, that burning sensation in the back of my leg because of the sciatic nerve, because of the fascia. I think it's a little better on the hamstrings if you kind of have the soft knees and you kind of keep your shins vertical. Really hits the posterior chain really well. Um, but yeah, so it hits the hamstrings like you wouldn't believe. It hits the glutes really well and it also works out your, your lower back muscles, the erectors, isometrically. Um, so just through that one movement, I'm hitting a weakness or weaknesses that Louis Simmons always spoke about. Um, and so, you know, in conjunction with that, I also need some front anterior core work. So, you know, I've got the, um, the hanging leg raises now, or the hanging knee raises and the sit-ups and whatnot. Um, it's just really interesting to me, you know, 
Uh, I know we all kind of want to do the big stuff. We all want to do the squat. I'm speaking for myself. If I could just get away with just squatting, you know, eight hours a day to improve my squat, I freaking would, man. You best believe, man. That's exactly what I want to do. That's exactly what I have fun in the gym for. And I've said to you guys in the past, like, I find a lot of this other stuff boring. Um, going through 10 sets of 10 of anything other than squats, I find it boring. Um, but now I kind of, like, I'm thinking to myself, I've said this in the past, maybe I should kind of get comfortable being bored because the rate limiting step for all of these movements um, seems to be uh, some of the stuff we talked about. Start with the hamstrings. Really work on your hamstrings. Like with the squat, I know you know a lot of people say, oh, the squat's not you know, that big on hamstrings. Man, it's your knee health, it's your hip health. It restores everything. Um, if your hamstrings are really tight, you, you know, you're gonna get out of that anterior pelvic tilt. And when you get out of that anterior pelvic tilt, Walking around in everyday life, you're going to get off your front foot or your toes because when we are in, in that you know, severe lordosis, severe uh, uh, anterior pelvic tilt, our weight shifts forwards onto, onto our toes. And what does that do? Well, if you're walking around like me, you know, 12 hours in ED and spend all that much time on your toes, what's going to happen? Your Achilles, your, your calves are going to get freaking jacked up, right? It's just that much tension through that particular joint is going to just tighten it up. Um, and then you come around to squatting and you're like, Jesus Christ, I have no dorsiflexion at all. So it's all kind of intertwined. It's all kind of connected. Um, this is why I think, you know, hit your weaknesses, try and progress your weaknesses, try and pick up the best um, movements for these weaknesses. Good morning is a fantastic, it's my favorite one now for hamstrings and glutes and lower back. Um, I've got the hanging knee raises now for the anterior core. Um, if, you're, if you're into bench pressing, man, Look at your upper back. You know, they all say upper back is the key to bench pressing. Um, you know, and, and to connect Pavel to Tzuling, how I started this chat, uh, it is very, very hard for somebody to have a really strong core and not have a really strong upper back. So there's a connection there. If you're really good with farmer's carries, you're going to have a strong upper back. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things. Anyway, just some thoughts about that. Um, I'm going to try and find fun in training my core, um, in training my... Uh, good mornings. Um, I've, uh, I'm getting more and more uh, pleasure out of this because I feel like this is the red limiting step. And if I progress my good mornings, I know for a fact the squat's going to start moving. All right, guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.